Thank you everyone so much for coming. Uh, we're Tribe. My name's George. This is Luke and Louisa. And these are our two other wonderful teammates, Gowan and Kieran, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but you'll be seeing a bit of them later on in the presentation. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to start this presentation off with a quote from Yoda. Do or do not, there is no try. And depending on how you look at this, you can either find it inspirational or a bit of a put off. And we here at Tribe think it's the latter because we believe in the power of trying. Every day, millions of people set themselves new personal goals, ways they want to improve themselves, habits they want to make or habits they want to break. And often these uh, goals they set themselves can seem too numerous or too unrealistic, but we set them for ourselves anyway. And perhaps that's something that you guys can relate to. Um, if you have a personal goal that you really want to achieve, but don't feel that you have the support or the visibility to achieve it, then Tribe may be for you. So we'd just like to play you a short advert to show you what we're about. Oh, there's no sound, John. Okay, strain your ears. Well, better than playing tennis. Need some encouragement? Then you need Tribe. Yeah. Tribe is a custom goal tracker and support network. Any goal you want to achieve or aspire to achieve can be entered and tracked. And using email invitations, you can ask anyone you wish to help support you in your endeavor. Your supporters can follow your goals and send messages of encouragement to help keep you motivated. Oh, well, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful gown, everyone. Uh, yeah, so your tribe is in your hands. It can be as large or as small as you like it to be. If you have a goal that perhaps you don't want other people to see, that's fine too. You don't need to invite anyone to support it. Uh, and if you don't reach your goal, that's also fine because we believe that there's great power in just trying. Uh, and now I'd like to pass over to Luke, who will talk us through the project's front end. Thank you, George. Um, we actually didn't come up with Tribe the first time. We spent about a day coming up with a plan for a totally different app. And it wasn't until the end of the day when we came together as a team that we realised we weren't super excited about it. So we went back to the drawing board, spent some more time thinking and eventually came up with Tribe. The one thing we really did all agree on is that we definitely wanted it to be a mobile application. So to achieve that in such a short space of time, we split the team in half, uh, with half us working on the front end and half us working on the back end. Uh, the front end is the visual user interface that you get to see when you go onto the app and how you interact with it. Uh, that team was led by myself and, and Gowan, who you've just heard from, uh, and we set about building the app. We picked React Native as a really powerful framework that allows you to write code in JavaScript once, and then the app runs on both Android and iOS devices. Uh, this was totally new to us. We'd never built anything uh, as a mobile app before. We'd never touched the React Native framework, let alone React. Um, so we were definitely up against it. This wasn't helped by on day two of the pro project, I had an accident and broke both elbows. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this setback, and with the deadline of the MVP being just two days away, we got to work and we did eventually get a basic version working. And since then, we've been shipping features. Um, and we do have a demo app to show to you at the end, and we're very proud of it. Uh, I will pass over to Lisa to talk about the back end. So the back end is all the code that runs behind the scenes of the app. And the back end team consisted of myself and George and Kieran. We decided to implement it with Django framework, which was new to us. And um, we didn't have any experience of using it. And uh, we didn't use Python, uh, which was that specific uh, Ruby framework. Um, that has proven to be quite difficult um, at the beginning of the project. Um, but we decided to do it because we thought it would be a great learning experience. And Python is very popular within the um, developer community. And it's really surprised by a great experience. Thanks, Louisa. I'm um, just going to show a short video now from uh, Kieran, who's going to talk you through some of the difficulties we, difficulties that we faced uh, and how we overcame them. 
Hello everyone. Sorry I couldn't be there in person to speak to you all today and present our projects. I want to talk to you about some of the challenges we faced and how we employ different strategies to overcome them. So in order to stay on top of the challenges that we faced by using new technologies, we had a lot to learn in a very short space of time and very, very steep learning curves. So we decided to employ an agile working methodology, breaking the project up into small tickets, working incrementally to develop features and tackle problems that we had identified, and meeting regularly to regroup and adapt our strategy as necessary. We laid out our working practices at the very start of our project in our team trial a document to which we adhere very well and, you know, really put us in good stead in terms of how we work together as a team. We had a stand up each morning and a retro each afternoon, as well as having ad hoc meetings to keep the lines of communication open and make sure everyone was abreast of the latest developments on both ends of our project. Yeah, so lots of challenges to overcome, but in the end, we did get a fully working front end, a fully working back end, drawn together into a completely viable working product, which we'll just uh, demo for you in a short video now. Welcome to Tribe. Here we're just logging in and you can go in and create yourself a goal. So here I'm trying to drink more water. And the thing's really cool, you go into your goal here, and then you can add the email address of someone you'd like to support you in making this goal. And as you see, it turns up in my email. Uh, the other user then logs in and then they go to their page supporters, go into the goal. They can now add a supported message and send that. And as you see, that comes up within the goal on the original user's app. Um, and the user can also increment their progress on the goal using the plus sign. And you'll see that the uh, status also updates on the home screen. I hope everyone here is drinking enough water in this hot weather. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming to our tribe talk. We hope you've enjoyed it and uh, happy to answer any questions. Very good. <laughs> Um, I honestly don't know how you t ha had time to film an advert for your app at the same time as writing an app in 10 days. It's really quite impressive. Um, next team that's going to come up is uh, Team Palander, who uh, have written an app to revolutionize your social life. And I think this is quite fitting because um, the team themselves have been incredibly social and the amount of teamwork that they've shown over the last 10 days has been really incredible. They've uh, communicated really well and worked really well, really strongly together uh, to achieve what they have done. So please, uh, if you could welcome on stage. Uh, Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, welcome to our presentation. We are Team Panda. I shall get us introduced. So my name is Anish. This is Russell, Slava. Uh, Lance and Laura, we had a lot of fun doing this project and we'd love to talk everybody through our process. So let's start off with probably the most important part for us in the beginning. Whenever we make a, a new project, it's really handy to start with a team charter. This charter allows us to, I suppose, gain focus on where our individual strengths lie, our individual goals, our team goals, team strengths, weaknesses, really anything in that sort of realm. A team charter allowed us to really focus on what we want to take out from this project. We focus on where we want to focus our own skills on, maybe where we want to bring our opportunities to become, I suppose, more successful. For us, our main focuses were firstly to have a great time, have fun, work in an honest and communicative environment. As well as that, we built a purpose around our team charter, and this was just to create a well-tested web app, but this time from scratch. Previously, we'd worked on seed projects. A seed project means there's already almost a foundation of what that's done for you. And then you can work on that. But from scratch was a brand new challenge for us. And yeah, it's been, it's been a great journey. Shall I pass over to Slava? Yeah. So we sat down and talked about all our ideas. Well, but um, a lot of ideas. So after checking around ideas we came up with, the basic idea of calendar. So, people live busy lives. Wouldn't it be great if we could compare schedules and find days where people are free to do something? 
Now, actually achieving this, well, it was, was much more difficult than we could first imagine. Yeah. So there were a lot of opportunities for us. I think the first three days were extremely tough. We had to learn a whole new framework. We had to build a, a calendar for the first time, which was incredibly difficult. We had to import third party, I suppose, third party components into the project. It was an extremely tough, tough first week. And there was genuinely, this was one point where we just thought we couldn't quite get there. Yeah, yeah, we, we were afraid that we'd get to this occasion standing in front of you fine people and just not really having anything to show for ourselves. So thanks for coming to our presentation. You've been great. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, goodbye now. No, 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 we're joking. We actually made something. So uh, how many times have you heard this? Oh, God, I'd love to meet up, but I'm just so busy. Or, yeah, I'll have to check my schedule. I've got some unavailable dates and they just never get back to you. Well, with Palander, finding a date that you're free is a problem of the past. Whether you're trying to sort out a day to play tennis with your brother, have a picnic in the park with a group of your closest friends, or steal a hoard of gold from a slumbering dragon in a game of D&D, then we're here for you. <laughs> and this is how we did it. So for our project, we, we tried to use an agile uh, working process, which is commonly used in the software industry. Uh, for getting to that, we used uh, several tools, uh, as we saw see before in the green chart that we use Milo, uh, which allows you to organize your ideas, and uh, you can use it for uh, diagramming if you need. Uh, we use Trello board, which uh, allows you to take the work the work you have to do and split it in uh, small pieces that we call tickets. And you, uh, you are able to uh, keep track of them and assign them to different people. And we we had a, a stand up meetings in the morning, which was uh, 15 minutes where we literally stand up and talk about what we want to what we are going to do that day. Uh, sometimes uh, about what we did the day before, or even uh, do a small show and tell to the rest of the team. So everyone is in the same page. Uh, we did the end of the day. Uh, uh, virtuals, which uh, usually were 30 minutes, but where we tried not to talk about COVID at all and more about our, our team for that day. Um, we sometimes we did some uh, uh, mock testing, uh, mock programming, so which uh, consists of uh, all the team is working on the same task uh, individually uh, for for some time. Um, usually, we, we can do these kind of things. Uh, for example, this uh, task. That is blocking the rest of the project, or that we feel like it's really important, and everyone in the team should actually understand what is going on. Uh, in our case, we apply that, for example, for uh, trying to find this uh, third-party uh, React calendar file that will work for us to actually do all work on that. And of course, testing, uh, well-tested code is so important. You can actually make modifications in there, and you don't have to worry about uh, it failing because the testing is going to tell you exactly what it is. Uh, so uh, in our project, we use MERN, uh, which stands for MongoDB. It's a document database. Uh, Express uh, is a web framework. Uh, React is a client-side JS uh, JavaScript framework. And Node is a primary JavaScript map, uh, web server. For testing, we used uh, Cypress as end-to-end uh, -end testing and uh, Jest for testing backend and front-end React uh, components. We also used uh, Weather API, which you will see a bit later in our project. And uh, we uh, used uh, Bcrypt hash, which allows us to build uh, really, it's really important to save your passwords and hash in um, Um, yeah, over the past two <laughs> over the past two weeks, we um, encountered quite a couple of challenges, from technical challenges to kind of motivational challenges that were mostly related to those technical challenges. And um, as seen by Eros, we have some um, agile processes in place to take care of like the technical challenges, and then um, those motivational challenges, especially that frustration of kind of. Um, all of those lovely features we had in mind when we built first storm brainstorming ideas and then realizing that things were taking longer just to kind of wrap our head around the frameworks. Um, and then as previously explained as well in the team charter, we had kind of agreed that we want to make sure that everyone gets the best out of this, that while we learn stuff, we want to make sure that people enjoy the process. So just 
um, sorry, in terms of regular check-ins as well, we did um, <laughs> make sure that we took breaks and had a couple of games and from, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> games and plays from table tennis to some virtual scribble rounds just to like pick up the mood and get everyone back on track mm -hmm. for the day at the end of the day. Yes, if you haven't played virtual Pictionary, then... <sighs> <laughs> no? Oh, I have no words. It is incredibly competitive. <laughs> uh, Wait, I mean, we'll do this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so now, the bit that you've all been waiting for, calendar. So uh, this is uh, Palander. So of course you're going to sign up. Uh, we'll sign up as John Doe, I think. So you have to put in your full name, John Doe, and then he'll put in his email address of John, uh, John Doe, I believe, and then also put in his password. So this is just a standard signing up function for our website. Uh, so then you become a user. He'll then log in. This is John Doe putting in his information, uh, putting his password in. Uh, and this takes him to his personal calendar. As you can see, there's a calendar on the left, which you can click on different dates and see the weather change. So the weather is 24 degrees on that day, and it is partially cloudy. He is now going to add an appointment in. So he's going to the doctor's, I believe, on the 20, uh, 26th of uh, July. So there's his appointment with the doctor's. Uh, he actually got that wrong, so he needs to update it, I think. Yeah, he, he's not going to the doctor's. Uh, he's going somewhere else on the day before, I think. So as you can see, you can update appointments as well as make appointments. So he's actually going to the dentist instead. He made, I mean, both medical professionals, so that's fine. Uh, now he's updating that uh, appointment. He's happy, I believe. As you can see, it's populated in the calendar on the left-hand side there. No, he's not happy. He's going to delete that appointment. So you can create, uh, update, and delete appointments. Uh, he's actually decided that he got the date completely wrong, and he's going to put it back in, as we all do, kind of make mistakes and then create new things. So he's going to the dentist. He's finally decided, and it's on this date. We'll now log in as someone completely different, Anish here. So Anish is logging in uh, just to show you some extra features that we have. Um, so as you can see, Anish has got a few more appointments on the right hand side. So he's uh, he's looking at his appointments. Now he's going to go and create a group event. So the group event will compare your personal calendar against other people's. So he's selecting John Doe who the dentist appointment. He's then selecting uh, me, I'm joining uh, uh, Anish. Come join me. Uh, he's now uh, selecting Erlans and selecting Slava. As you can see, the calendar is populating with days they are unavailable. He's now going to choose Friday the 22nd. That sounds like a good day. It's 24 degrees and it's partially cloudy. So he's decided to do uh, uh, drinks with the pals, uh, do a little cheeky uh, king uh, emoji sign there. And then that date is booked in. So if we go back to his personal calendar, you'll see in his list, that drinks with the pals and everyone who's invited uh, is now scheduled in his personal calendar to check that that has been saved to the database and that the other people that have been invited have also got that event in their calendar. Well, let's log in as Laura quickly. So Laura's logging in. She's putting her, uh, her details in, her password. And as you can see, Laura is invited to drinks with the pals with all of us on the 22nd. Yes. And that is our app. We have been Palander. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Team Palander. Um, the course is, is over now, so you're not going to be seeing each other every single day. Um, and so I'm personally very pleased that you've got a way to keep in touch and organize socials and things without it. Um, the next uh, group is has really impressed me over the last two weeks, um, specifically with their commitment to bringing everyone along um, in the project, making sure that everyone understands uh, all of the code and that the uh, no one's being left behind at all. The, the kind of camaraderie in this uh, over the last two weeks has been really amazing to see. Um, and the app that they've produced is a, a testament to that and a testament to what you you all really can achieve. And uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic to see. Um, so please welcome um, Team Brains on Brioche. Sorry about the spoilers, people. So, hello everyone. Thank you so much for your presence here today. Uh, we are going to uh, showcase you what we made. And uh, let's start first with uh, the team. My name is Alex. We also have the genius artist. We also have Fazan, the soul of the team, our amazing project manager. 
Jimmy and also the uh, one and only Stevie. And we are the brains of Rioch. <laughs> It will be interesting, but uh, we can assure you that it's not because we try everything. So, uh, let's talk about uh, our uh, our work and uh, uh, with the team charter, how we organize ourselves and uh, how we decide to work on. So uh, every morning we were starting with our uh, stand up when we were uh, assigning the pairs and we were. Uh, Discussing, discussing, uh, and planning what the tickets, uh, the tickets we're going to work on. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, we had the retro where we were uh, evaluating on the on our daily progress. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, our first concern was, of course, to make sure that we create an open and safe, safe environment where everyone feels that. Uh, uh, they can contribute, they are respected, they feel comfortable, and they are a valuable member of the team. And also something else we I had in mind was to uh, make sure we use all our all our past experience with the previous team projects that we had to uh, minimize the hidden states and to follow the version control process uh, to the level. Uh, and also, of course, uh, because it was uh, it, it's a team project, but also we have some individual goals. We just want to make sure that uh, we actually learn. And uh, we can safely say, all of us, that these two weeks we learned a lot. It looked like it was like a month with so many things that we learned. Uh, and also, I would like to thank uh, our coach, John, of course, for his massive help, and uh, his uh, great advices. He's an absolute rock star. So I think everyone in this room, like the the the, the April cohort agrees to that. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm gonna hand over to Stevie now. He's gonna talk to you about the concept of the creation of uh, Thanks, Alex. Um, so as you can probably tell from our title, we're just five guys brought together by a mutual love of awful. Um, or to be more specific, the core ethos of Opal, which is waste nothing. Uh, modern life is geared towards waste. We get the majority of our food from the supermarket with little thought as to the resources and labor that's gone into bringing it there. We bring it back home, cram it in the fridge, and often we end up throwing away a lot of it, either because we simply forgot it was there, well, it was just a really hot week and we decided we were only eating apples. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is that this is the concept that was sort of uh, um, in which our app was rooted. We wanted to create a product which would allow a user to keep track of the contents of their fridge and also reduce the amount of food that was ending up in landfill. Um, we also thought it would be good to cater to a user who might have an emptier fridge. Um, so actually that is the user whom we will be thinking of in uh, this example. So I want you to imagine that you come home, you open your fridge and you see within it two items, brains and brioche. Um, you might say this is a somewhat odd combo. I would counter by saying that it's not quite as odd as deciding to keep bread in your fridge, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the point is, the point is, what is the point? The point is, <laughs> let's just imagine you're frugal at the meat counter, but you appreciate a sweeter loaf. And this is where Brains on Brioche, the app, comes in. With Brains on Brioche, you can keep track of the contents of your fridge while consistently coming up with interesting, interesting is definitely the word, interesting, <laughs> exciting recipes of varying degrees of quality. You might, you might be disgusted, you'll never be bored. <laughs> so just to talk a little bit about our process, we started off by just trying to get to our minimum viable product, our MVP, which is just basically allowing users to search for recipes, um, entering ingredients they had into a search bar, and then bringing back a list of recipes from an external database, and just being able to click on that recipe and see the instructions. 
we began by that is not the one <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a uh, old powerpoint oh uh, dear okay that's all right we, we won't recreate it um we began with what you might call a real brainstorming um <laughs> Of course for that. Um, and uh, that eventually allowed us to hone in on our product and our logo, which um, brings us on to Jimmy, who's going to talk to us about the technologies used. Cheers to you, Dave. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys through uh, how we actually implemented the application and the technologies that we used. Um, so in the end, we we used quite a few different technologies together uh, in Army to kind of create our application, which at times was a bit overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, in the end, we managed to get this built together uh, to create a product that we're pretty, pretty proud of. Um, so right at the start of the project, we decided that we wanted to write the application using the Mern stack. Uh, which is just a really common and popular way to write a uh, website. Um, our application is split out into two parts. Uh, so there's the front end, which is the client, and the back end, which is the server. So the client was written in React, uh, which allowed us to create a dynamic web page where the uh, content would re render kind of instantaneously as and when it got new information to it, uh, rather than having to route to uh, different web pages. Uh, or refreshing the page to kind of implement different functions. Um, the client was uh, served by the server, which is written in a node environment with uh, express routes to control the flow of data. Uh, and our server plugged into two databases, one that we wrote ourselves for users. Uh, we wrote that using MongoDB slash Mongoose. Um, and then we also connected to an external database, which had all the rest of the information using a uh, third party API tools. Um, that is our application in a nutshell, but Barzan is going to show you it in action. I just hope that this works, guys. So please bear with me. <laughs> so this is our application right here. Brains on Brioche, the no waste revolution. And if a user comes in, they can actually put in all their ingredients that they want, one by one, and it just stacks up and basically they just carry on putting it and they can render any recipe whatsoever that they like. So some of them are ready to make, as you can see. Um, others, they need to actually get more ingredients to be able to make that. And if they're feeling adventurous, they could toggle this to see what other recipes they can make if they actually get more ingredients to be able to do so. And that's when they think, you know what, this is an amazing website. Let me sign up to it. So they actually create an account here. They put their username. So this person is Jenny. She's going to put in her name. She's going to put in her password, which is encrypted. And she's going to put in her email. But obviously, it's not actually an email address. So it doesn't let her sign up. So she actually has to put an email. And once she signs up, she goes to the best feature of this, which is she's got her own fridge. And this is on the database. She could put whatever she wants in there. And it gets stored for later use if she did want it. So right now she's putting pasta, garlic, tomato, peppers, and she's going to see what she can actually make for dinner. So some of these look very appetizing, but between us, who actually wants to cook in this day and age? So she thinks, you know what? I'm just going to log out. I'll come back to this later. And that's when another user comes in, they log in, and this is James, and that's his fridge. He's got all of this stocked up, but for some reason, he just felt like having chili. So he took it off because he's run out, and he's also took off peas because he's run out of peas now. But he did get milk and butter in the morning. So he's going to add that to his fridge, and he's able to just add it one by one, and you just press what's for dinner, and it just gets rendered through. So all of these are ready to make, as you can see, with that green tick, and it just makes it a lot easier for um, James to know what he can make. But he feels a lot more adventurous than Jenny. So he's going to check what else is on offer if he just buys more ingredients and is able to actually um, make something a bit more adventurous. And once he actually likes one of these recipes, that's when he decides to actually click on one of them just to see 
what comes up. And then th these are the ingredients that he does have. These are the ingredients he's missing. And it's got all of the measurements right over here, if you guys can see. And at the bottom of it, it's got the instructions. So you could just follow along with the instructions as well as going to the website if he did not trust our instructions or our recipe and see it live action on the website itself. So obviously this one is for BBC and he can actually press it for the BBC and get taken to the BBC website and see exactly what comes up there. Um, and he's got all of the ingredients, all of the recipe, everything that we've got on our website, it's there as well. So he actually trusts brains on brioche for once. And that's when he actually sees, you know what, I actually like them. Let me see about us. And he wants to contact us because he fancies a chat. So that's our contact details. If you guys fancy a chat, please get in touch with us. We'll be happy to hear from you. And I'll pass on to our chief. Hello everyone, I just wanted to talk about the learning experience we had for this project. Um, it is an old presentation, so that's all right. I'll forgive you this time. <laughs> As you mentioned in our team chat, it's really important for all of us just to come out of this having learned something, if any. <laughs> um, I think I can speak for all of us when I say the learning curve of the project was immense. We chose the MERN stack, which none of us had any experience in whatsoever. And it took some time. It took a lot of mobbing, which we had to get used to. But once we got a project base down, the features did flow. <laughs> so, um, and I'm proud to say that we persevered and we fought against temptation to move back to technology that we did know. And I think there's one takeaway that comes from this is don't be afraid of the unknown. Dive head first into something you don't know and you'll come out of it all the better for it. Learning something new. <laughs> Make sure you have a team like this around. Oh. <laughs> right, right now to say it's the app. It's open for lots of implementation of features. And that goes without saying, because when, you, when you've got Five brains like oh, this. On the bridge. Any questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Brains on Brioche. Um, I still feel a little bit sick every time I see that logo. Um, it's pretty horrific, um, but it was, it's a great app. Uh, thank you for, for your presentation. That was really good to see. Um, our last group today uh, set out to uh, learn a whole bunch of new techs and to uh, make electric cars more interesting and make the usage of them more interesting. I think they've succeeded on both. Counts. Um, and so I'd like to welcome uh, up onto the stage the Technology Brothers to demo their app, Tim Tom. Uh, hey everyone. Yeah, we're uh, we're the Technology Brothers. <laughs> Every time. Sorry. No, we're not. Uh, thank God. Um, yeah. Uh, every time I hear that, it's it becomes more apparent how terrible a name it is, but it's on paper. So. Uh, but we're made up of uh, Simon, Sam, Tom, and Tim. Uh, our product is called our product is called Tim Tom, um, which is in no way obviously a ripoff of Tom Tom, an objectively terrible provider of navigation services. Um, our product helps you get around better in your electric vehicle. Essentially, um, I'll pass over to Sam to explain a bit more. Yeah. So our problem um, when you have an electric vehicle, long vehicle trips, um, realistically they take multiple charging stops. So it's about half an hour to an hour for an average car to, to fully charge. So why not, um, instead of spending all that time in boring service stations, things like that, why not stop somewhere more fun, somewhere you can actually do something? So our solution to that is an electric vehicle routing tool um, that's going to allow you to make the most of your time. So you give us a, an origin and a destination. We plan your route for you. Um, and then tell you about interesting places of interest you can stop along the way. So you can stop at a National Trust site, a football ground, for reason you'll find out later, a park bench. Um, 
And then, yeah, you can enjoy more of your char uh, charging stops. Yeah, we set out a few goals before we start on the project, really, before we even knew, knew what project we were going to be doing. Uh, we wanted to, all four of us wanted to learn as much as possible to be able to plan the goal. Um, I think we did a really good job of that. Learning loads every day. Um, and then also, we want to build something that probably had a real use case as well, like something we would use, which is not something, uh, you know, to give us a chance that we're really excited to do. Um, and then finally, we just want to come out of this one. Uh, we haven't done it for other course, and uh, let's keep that going rolling. Um, in terms of the tech stack, on the front end, we're using React, uh, which is pretty popular at the minute. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and then our web framework is uh, code, and, and on the front end as well. Uh, there's this great thing, map box that's used to run the map. I, uh, I'm sure you remember the yeah, idea of the map. Um, then we call a few different um, APIs in the back end to, uh, to get both the, uh, the electric vehicle charging station to create the route, but then also to put places on the route that you'd like to visit. And that's through the um, here, map box again, and the uh, Google Places. And I'll pass it on to Tim, which is taking through the, uh, the actual application itself. Uh, I will swiftly pass back to Simon, who will take you through oh, the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, so, some stuff we did really well. Uh, I thought we got really creative. Uh, we were kind of up against it, both in terms of the learning, and I think we only managed to get a route on a map on Tuesday lunchtime. Uh, so, we were like thinking of like ways that we could hack it. Like, the original thing we designed was quite a bit more complicated and basically like a few months' work. Uh, we like, yeah, I think Tim mentioned earlier, if we have a, like a video mashup of all the times, we're just like, yeah, let's hack it. Um, the teamwork was great. We definitely achieved the having fun goal. Uh, we maybe spent a little bit too much time talking about cricket and politics, um, but we but we had a lot of fun and like no people issues. Everyone was very easy to work with, um, and we absolutely hit the learning goals uh, hugely um, and used a lot of new technologies we hadn't used before. Um, a few challenges: uh, testing just didn't really happen. Uh, it was a little bit. Uh, complicated with the map uh, because the route is kind of like hidden and so it's like hard to read off the page with the test um, and also we were just kind of uh, learning how to do things by trying to build them and then never really got around to the testing. Um, we built up a hell of a lot um, which I think is why you can kind of like visit a scaffold as, as you're charging your car. Um, <laughs> which, um, yeah, we think we we thought it would be quite a lot easier than we was a little bit of hubris, uh, but again, just kind of like we're very good at reprioritizing and uh, like staying very agile um, in terms of like what we wanted to build and what was most important. Um, and again, yeah, the new technologies made uh, the learning curve quite steep. Uh, yeah, so I mean, this follows on naturally from that, really, in terms of what we learned. Um, but by virtue of the fact that we chose stuff we didn't know, if we were going to actually ever make anything, we had to learn how to do those things. Um, so that's what you have on the screen, really. React was a necessary component for the front end. Um, the APIs, which are the, the things we used to get data from external sources, you know, using one is kind of fine and you get taught to that in Makers, but using three or four at the same time and sort of juggling the data you get back and stitching it together uh, so you can work with it is challenging. Um, and yeah, we did pretty well at that. And then async is a bit of a jargony thing, but uh, these things take time. So you can't just queue one up after the other and expect it to work. You have to handle it in a way it tells it to uh, wait for each other. And it's tricky. Um, so we got that down to a T. And then, uh, yeah, this is this is a bit jargony again. Apologies. But uh, all the gubbins to go with the new technologies we used, there were new. Uh, we got our heads around in a really good way. Um, and that takes us on to our demo. So before I kick it off, I'll just explain a little bit what we're looking at. So ours is a single page web app. There are no different pages. This is it. Um, and you've got obviously the UK here, hopefully that's familiar. Um, and this is the modal where you put in your information for your trips. Um, so I'll kick it off and I'll try and talk through it. It goes really fast. So I'll just um, go auctioneer mode. Um, yeah, so you start off, you can put in your origin and you can type in anything basically. We have a geocoding service that will take a place, in this case, London and St. Andrews, and derive some coordinates for it, which our services use. Um, you then pick your car. So we're going for a jag initially here. Um, <laughs> Starting with 80% battery, uh, we hit go, the service start running, and it's going to build a route for us. And it's going to put on that route all the places we need to charge our car, which you can see are the waypoints on it there. Um, you also get the things you can do at these stops. So these are little waypoints. We need to do a bit more work there to make it look presentable. But you get the gist and that these are all things that you can and can't, or well, you can do, you can do if they're open anyway. Um, at these waypoints, there's some scaffolders, like Simon said, if you need some scaffolding done. Um, <laughs> 
and it shows you out for the whole route. Um, and I think we'll demo a little bit more of functionality here and doing the same trip, same vehicle, um, but with a different starting charge. So you might have 80% when you start, you might have 10. Um, obviously, your route needs to change if that's the case because you uh, aren't going to get far. I'm just trying to get out of London on 10%. And also to demonstrate, we haven't just hard coded this, it actually does work. Um, so you can see that we have to stop straight up out of London there, get some juice in the wagon. Um, and then, yeah, I scrolled out too far. We're in Algeria, um, back to the UK, we go. Um, and so you can see how that changed the route. Um, and in like fashion, we'll now do the same route again, sorry, um, but we'll do it with a different vehicle. And the point of that is that we have a matrix that has all these different vehicles. They all have different uh, battery capacities. So you can get less far or further on the same battery. Um, so we plug it in for a Kia, you'll see we've got seven stops now instead of five. So it's a real wide application that is variable by vehicle um, and builds that route accordingly, giving you a lot of fantastic things that you can do uh, in these various parts of uh, Fair London and Fair England on your way out. Um, I think we're about to flip to mobile mode, so it's fully responsive, it does work on mobile, obviously it looks a bit busy sometimes, but that's just data for you. Uh, we're starting in Cardiff this time, and we're going to go to Morpeth in Northumberland, um, so a bit of cross-country stuff, and to really show the, the variability here, we're going to use a vehicle that has a tiny battery capacity in the Ego Live 40, um, not really built for this, but um, hey-ho. Um, so we've got 75% battery and we're going to chuck that route in and you'll see that you've got to stop 18 times. I think if anyone does this, then more fool you, frankly, like um, get a train. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, I don't know who that is, God. Um, uh, yeah, that's the demo. That's the thing done. Um, yeah, it's a great experience. It works. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Hello. Uh, thank you, Technology Brothers. Um, and thank you to all of our uh, teams which presented today. Um, it's when watching these apps, uh, when watching these presentations, I always cannot believe that. Two weeks ago, you started with a completely empty folder on your computer and everything in it has been um, has been produced by you. And it's really amazing to see. Um, and you've done really well to produce them. Um, this isn't, while this is the end of the course, I said this a little bit earlier, while this is the end of the course, uh, there's a lot left in your maker's journey. You'll be moving on to, to the job hunting side um, next week. And I'm really excited to see uh, where you go next. and and what you build. Um, so if I could get one more round of applause for all of the team. Um, yeah, so take it easy this weekend, rest up, celebrate a bit, um, and then you can start the job hunting grind on Monday. Uh, and that'll be Tuesday, sorry. Um, after this, uh, so that's our that's our presentations today. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask either me or uh, we have other coaches here, we've got um, other ma makers staff, uh, we're going to be walking around. Please come up to us, um, say hi, uh, ask us any questions. We're more than happy to, to give you the answers. Um, we have uh, drinks and pizza uh, available for you. So uh, please stick around, have a slice. Um, and uh have a chat it's really been great seeing you and uh i hope you all have a nice weekend it's nothing at the moment um maybe leo you could start off by talking about some of the um coding languages that we use yeah sure i can talk a bit about that so we have mainly on the course uh on the programming languages, we start mainly with Ruby, which is quite a simple language to start learning the main programming concepts and the main software concepts, which is a good language to learn. And then around half of the course, so around week five, six, people tend to move to JavaScript, which is good because it allows you to learn early on a second language and also to, to discover something a bit different. And then it becomes easier for you to learn your kind of fourth or fourth languages. And in final projects, often people use technologies that are not covered on the course. Um, so, but yeah, it's mainly Ruby and JavaScript. I believe that we have some questions now, actually. Yeah, yeah. so um, from Anonymous, 
Uh, is any of the cohort neurodiverse? And if so, what practical support do you offer during uh, the learning journey? It's an interesting um, question, actually, because we recently, our team um, did a sort of workshop on um, neurodiversity and how we can better our um, practices in terms of like our students and our staff. Um, there's lots of things that we're planning to put in place, different styles of interviewing, video interviewing, um, but in terms of the actual curriculum, that might be something for Leo to cover. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, most of the most of the curriculum is, uh, is text based, but we also now have a lot of uh, YouTube videos and demonstration videos as well, which uh, obviously like the spectrum of like neurodiversity is like um, really, uh, really big. And uh, I guess uh, our goal is really to tend to have a curriculum that allows for more neurodiverse people to have all this range of mediums they can use uh, in terms of support. Um, we definitely have some resources and uh, as that has been helpful to support some learners that were neurodiverse in the past. But again, like uh, this is something that we constantly try to improve by um, training ourselves and by using some resources to, to get better and supporting a, a wider diversity of, of people on that on the spectrum as well. Thanks, Lil. Um, so the next question is, could you please repeat the information mentioned about the 15th of October? Um, yes, so on the, um, oh, I think it was maybe was the 10th of October. I mean, I, I don't know if this was about the pre-course dates and the actual course start dates, but basically um, for every cohort, you have a month, which is a little bit lighter than what it would be full-time learning. Um, and so, for October, the pre-course would be the 12th of September, and then your full-time would be the 10th, and that would be run hybrid. So um, if I'm correct, Leo, it's two weeks on, two weeks off? Uh, yeah, 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 that's kind of, uh, I mean, we're kind of moving to a to a more hybrid kind of system where even if you, if you have on-site weeks, you don't necessarily have to come in because we still run the session on Zoom to allow for like people who want to come to the office to be able to come in and to kind of join on-site, but also for people being remote, maybe you live far from the office, maybe you can't come on that day to still be able to attend the sessions. But overall, it's kind of like this two weeks on, two weeks off, but it's also allowing for more flexibility in terms of whether you want to come in or not, or whether you can come in or not. Thank you. Okay, but also if anyone here wants to ask questions about um, not just the boot camp, but apprenticeships. We have um, scaled up a lot in our apprenticeship offering. So um, if like if you have anything, any queries about that, um, we can add to that as well. So it's not just for the 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 academy boot camp. Uh, how frequent, frequently are opportunities said for the apprenticeship? Um, very frequently. Uh, we have a few that have been posted this week. Um, we had one for Compare the Market. We have one for CETA. Uh, I mean, that was DevOps, but we are having them. I would say we're having a, two come in a week for the last few weeks, um, but it's been sporadic. So that's not necessarily going to be every single week. Um, however, uh, we are getting approached instead of us approaching companies, companies are approaching us now to um, get uh, apprentices in. And because it's part of the government funded levy scheme, um, it's available to most companies. So it's, um, yeah, it's a great way for them to get talented, to, uh, amazing tech talent. So it's very popular at the moment for us to have frequent um, apprenticeship opportunities. Um, how balanced is gender makeup of each intake interesting uh we just did a statistic um recently which it was 47 percent of our um entire um student base is now 47 percent women and uh yep 47 percent that was that was it so um it's very it's it, it's very well balanced um next question how difficult is the coder byte assessment compared to code wars and is there a hard pass mark or is it flexible? Leo, I think this is you. 
Yeah, I believe it's it's hard to say how, that would be more difficult than Code Wars because I guess it would depend on like your own experience through it and maybe your, your previous experience in programming or non-experience in programming. Uh, I believe they would be on the same le uh, level of difficulty. Maybe that's something that uh, someone from the admissions team could could clarify and maybe uh, dive a little bit more in. But I believe that they would be on the similar level of uh, kind of difficulty in there. Um, I, I don't think it's a hard pass. I think this is a little bit of flexibility depending on, you know, uh, what you've done and, and uh, your your specific like conversation with the admissions team. But again, that's something that they could maybe uh, give a little bit more info on. But I, I think there's some yeah flexibility in there as well to be to be confirmed by them. Thank you. Um, the next question is, are apprenticeships for Makers Academy students or a separate program? They are a separate program. However, you still do the same boot camp. So you'll do the same uh, sort of a curriculum as our academy do. The only difference is after you're finished that is you, uh, no, sorry, there's not, uh, you get a salary from day one on the boot camp and on the apprenticeship and you don't, so you don't have to pay to do it. And also you will be uh, on placement afterwards for 12, 12 to 18 months. Um, so that's the main difference. Um, next question is, is the course same for software testing apprenticeships or is there any difference between courses in terms of course structure? Leo, this is definitely a you question. Yeah, yeah, it's a definitely different course because they're going to probably have some overlap in terms of like, you know, general software principles, but software testing is sort of a, a completely different set of skills than software engineering, even for those overlap again. So that would be a different a different course as well. I'm not super familiar with the, the course of software testing apprenticeship because that's something that's relatively new. I haven't been able to kind of work on, but um, I, I believe that they would be quite different indeed. Thank you. Um, how, next question, how would you describe the culture of makers slash classes and sessions? Um, makers is a very, um, holistic uh learning culture um we focus a, a, a massive amount on mental health so we practice meditation sessions um we make sure that we check in um with our students our staff everyone um it, it's we care about mental health above most things um and that goes like from the coaches um to the SMT, to, to everyone, we just, you know, we want to make sure that you're, although because it's such a difficult course, um, we want to make sure that you're um, coping well with it. And, you know, we are doing the best we can to help you with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I, if I can add something as well, yes, yeah, specifically on the, on the classes and sessions. Um, yeah, there's really this like EQ part of the curriculum, what, what we tend to call soft skills in the industry are as if you know they are less important or actually they are probably as important or even more important than the technical skills themselves because this is really about who you're going to work with who you're going to learn with and it's all about creating this kind of safe and and really stimulating learning environment for everyone where everyone can learn everyone can grow everyone can feel like they can contribute and it, it's about really creating this space which is really as imp more important than the, you know, the, the contents and the curriculum itself. It's all part of the curriculum. Uh, and we're really trying to kind of add this into all the sessions and all the, all the different parts of the, of the course as well, throughout the course and even beyond that as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, next question. How would you describe, oh, sorry, next one. Uh, I just applied for the apprenticeship and the next step for me is to complete a Ruby course and then challenges. Is there a time limit to complete this? Um, from my understanding, it was 10 days, but uh, you might be able to clarify this, Leo. I think it's 10 days, and unless that changes things. I think from, from the moment you receive the assignment, it's something like a 10 day, uh, 10 days, 10 days uh, time limit, yes. So there's probably more info in the email or comms you received from the admissions team on that, but I believe that's, yeah, the, the yeah. one. Yeah, I think you're right. I think definitely 10 days. Yeah. Uh, next question. Are there scholarships available for students part of organizations such as Coding Black Females? Yes, there are. And we're actually hoping to bring out more this year, um, which is really exciting. So I think we had 
from quoting black females, I think 10 scholars um, in 2021, if I'm correct. May, I can't remember the exact number, but we, um, you know, they did really well and we're definitely with our community partners, we're aiming to open a lot more scholarships. So we work with Islamic makers as well, um, Code Bar, um, you know, we, we really want to widen um, the amount of scholarships we get this year. So um, yes, I think that's something you can definitely look out for. And also like, um, you know, um, really make yourself known, like reach out to us um, on social and, you know, we can have a chat and, you know, like um, if it's something that you're really interested in, um, yes, speak to us uh, about it directly. Uh, and it's something that we want to get the ball rolling on. So the more the people talk to us about it, the more likely we can start that process. Um, okay, uh, next one is, what does the age range look like at Makers? Um, from, uh, from what I know, I would say it, it varies, like, you know, massively. So you get people from the ages of 20, two 23 maybe younger um to like people who are retired and are wanting to retrain in coding i don't know leo if you have a more uh efficient statistic statistic than i do but <laughs> yeah uh, i definitely don't have statistics but i see uh is myself as a coach that yeah we definitely have people ranging from early 20s who have just done uni or barely uni to people who have done previous jobs before, who had their whole career before and retrain, or maybe as you said, people who are retiring maybe in their 60s or something. So it really varies a lot. It depends on course, but we always see this kind of like diversity in the age range as well uh, in, each, in each course. Yeah, um, you know, one of our sort of uh, mottos is, you know, like it, you can, change your career at any age as well like most of our makers are career changers so it's something that we really encourage people always say to me when at events they say oh I think I'm too old to change my career and I you know I don't want to I'm nervous to do that and you know most of the uh, most successful makers are people who have had a long career in a different industry and they just have a different view on things when so they add quite a lot of value to the company they go to they're the ones who ask the questions that no one else asks you know so it's actually um you know you're adding value so don't ever think that age is a barrier um because it's definitely not uh, okay next question is is there a set time for learning say 10 to 5 uh, for the online learning or is it a uh, astronomous <laughs> i can't pronounce it uh, sorry leo that's definitely your question yeah, so usually yes, um, on the it, it depends on the pre-course, which is the four weeks up to the main course. It's mainly self-led, so you would work on a, a set of uh, exercises or challenges for those four weeks, um, and uh, you could have like some you would have some support from a coach, but that would be mainly self self-directed. Uh, so you kind of organize your own hours and can do it a bit part time as well. Uh, however, the main course, which is the really twelve weeks of the immersive course are uh, really full time and it would be something like yes 9 30 to 5 or to, to 6 depending on uh, but kind of like office office hours really from uh, monday to friday and what will happen is that usually the morning would be kind of reserved for coach less sessions workshops uh coaching in general these kind of things and then the afternoon would be for more like individual challenges or pairing on challenges um depending on the depending on the weeks it can be teamwork weeks as well when you work in projects uh, but in terms of hours, that would be kind of like yeah, Monday to Friday, nine to five, sort of sort of time. Yeah. Um, the next one kind of feeds off that question actually. Um, can I work slash freelance at the same time during the twelve weeks? We really um, encourage people to sort of prepare for the course as if it's like as if it's a full time job, um, because it is a lot of work and it is really mentally straining. Some people, um, if you're, you know, like if you were doing say evening work or at the weekend, um, possibly. However, I think it's one of those sort of things where you have to commit fully, fully. Otherwise, you might get burnt out, and it may end up um, the course may not um, be successful as you hope for. But Leo, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. If you've had any students that worked at the same time. 
Yes, yeah, that might be really rare, but definitely, usually we would advise um, against because um, the course is like a really uh, full on experience. It's really like a full time learning experience. And there's a lot of like challenges, um, a lot of work that goes into it. And uh, you really need to have your kind of full attention on it. And but at the same time, also making sure that you have time to rest, to have good nights of sleep, to rest on the weekend, because that's really important as well for learning. So um, yeah, in terms of like managing time, it's probably best to really keep keep all your time dedicated to the course uh, to make to make the most of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, how is the best way to prepare for the apprenticeship opportunities, making projects? Um, for mine, I think the best way to prepare, obviously, is doing as uh, much practice in the code as you can uh, for the assessments. Um, making sure that you um, really research the company that you're going that you're applying for um, but yeah um, in terms of maybe like the technical side layout I don't know if you could offer any advice yeah I guess the best way to prepare is to well first do the, those Pad Academy uh, Ruby course Codewars Katas and the resources that we usually give uh, uh, before before the whole uh, admission process but at the same time anything that you can kind of uh, put your time on resources, uh, maybe uh, doing some projects, yeah, maybe doing some more challenges, maybe trying out things in there, depending on the time you have and the, the, the energy you want to put into it. Anything that relates to like you getting practiced with coding, with programming, or with um, with software in general would be a good way to to prepare aside of those kind of like core things that we give you. Yeah. I think just to add to that as well, you know. Um, it's amazing to do lots of pre preparation before applying, but you know, bear in mind most people who apply, they're the same as the academy where they've never had any technical background experience. It's more about your passion. And if you are like really love challenges and you, you're you just really passionate about coding and about technology, um, and that's something that you want to make sure that you are before, you know, because it's quite a big commitment. Um, so yeah, like, um, yeah, people in the interviews, they just want to know you're passionate about it. Um, we can teach you all the tech, like we can teach you that, um, that can come after, but you know, just make sure you're excited about um, what you're going to be doing and the company you're going to be working for. Yeah, uh, something, something, uh, sorry, because something I'd add to that as well is like, what's really important is also that, that mindset that kind of neatly touched a bit on is like that really you're going to learn how to learn, not only learn tech, but learn to really have this mindset where you you know you can learn new things so a good habit would be for example to keep maybe start having a learning journal even if you're doing just a little bit every day or every two day um try to keep track of what you've learned of the challenges you had of the kind of roadblocks that you had and start having this habit of like journaling and really reflecting of your learning maybe getting a notebook maybe just like talking to yourself what you've learned what was challenging really trying to get yourself into this mindset of like learning and into this Kind of what we call growth mindset is going to be a good way to prepare yourself to the course because the course is going to be all about that as well for those 12 weeks yeah absolutely and just one more thing to, to add to that um we have um meetups with um an organization called free Code camp we had one the other night actually it was on um, tuesday night and it's just people who want to network and talk about um you know software development coding they just want to you know swap tips and sometimes they do workshops free code camp is a really good platform maybe to go on to just to speak to people um about um yeah just uh, like your journey and you know and get some advice as well um so yeah that's just one more little tip um okay the next question is does anyone fail does anybody fail the course what is the pass rate among trainees I don't know the pass rate I mean um you know it's quite a rigorous like our course sales team is very um rigorous in, in how they choose people to come on the course so we always kind of make sure that they're that they're ready for the course and that it's the right thing thing for them so usually they have um you know all the tools they need to pass the course, but um, I don't know, Leo, if you know exactly pass rate, I'm not sure. Yeah, so there's not really, it's not like, um, we don't really pass or fail at the end of the course. We're gonna really support you um, to the best we can into learning, even if you're having a slightly different learning pace or learning journeys that 
uh, the rest of the of the cohort. Some things that could happen in like maybe the most extreme cases, like when you really uh, maybe for external stressors or circumstance, you're really having a hard time on the course, maybe having a lot of difficulties to uh, go through some of the weeks. Maybe uh, deferral can be an option to a different cohort. But I guess once you're part of the of the makers kind of like uh, process, part of the makers bootcamp, we're really going to support you to the best uh, you can to make the most of the twelve weeks. And there's not really like a kind of pass or fail at the end of the course. Um, even if you still need support beyond the course to, to prepare yourself for job hunting and you still have some gaps to fill in your learning, this is something we're going to support you as well. Thank you. Uh, next question is, are there any good organizing slash reflection tools or resources like the learning journey you'd recommend doing already? Uh, notion calendars, time tracking, etc. There's, I mean, none that can come to mind for me, um, but we are going to be bringing out, um, interestingly, we're working on a meditation journal right now, um, and it kind of talks about, like, you know, the, we always talk about makers celebrate the small wins, and so it's kind of like every day sort of tracking, like, even if you didn't do something, you know, astronomical, it's like the small wins. Um, and that's something we encourage to do. And I know there's a lot of uh, meditation journals, which it's not all about meditating. It's like it's just about sort of expressing what you've done that day. Um, but yeah, I don't know any specific ones or apps. Do you know any, Lil? Um, can be anything really. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Like it depends on people. Some people really just like to keep it to, you know, a notepad or like a virtual notepad or physical notepad or something really simple. Some people like to keep a blog, like a full blog during the course. Some people blog every day or every week. You can use, yeah, Notion, you can use Calendar, you can use time trapping, you can use something a bit more structured, like a to-do, if that's more your thing. Uh, I know that for me, I like to write on notepads or stuff like this, but that could be different for other people. So yeah, really anything, you can experiment with those different things before really finding the one that really works for you. And that's that's probably fine. Uh, as long as there is this action of like really reflecting, keeping track of things and really getting a habit out of it. It doesn't really matter the format you have because you will find the ones that works the best for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, next question. What is the acceptance rate for the course? What percentage of applicants fail the quota by assessment? That's a tough one, actually. Usually we have a core salesperson on this call, which is this would be perfect for them because they probably know exactly how many. Um, the Interestingly, I don't know the answer to this question, but I'll, I will say that you can apply to the course as many times as you want. And what often will, what will often happen is people will, uh, maybe not often, but sometimes people will fail and we give them feedback we keep them on track we keep them going we don't just say okay you've not passed this you know you've not gone to next month's cohort we try again we do it again and you can try and you try for the next month and then you try for the next month you can apply as many times as you want and each time we give you you know as much feedback as we can and really detailed as well and it just gives you more time to practice so um on that front i'm not sure the exact amount um but all i can say is don't worry if you don't get there um, first time, basically, or second or third. Um, I don't know if you know anything about this, Leo, or numbers-wise. Uh, I, I wouldn't probably add anything to what you just said because I don't know the number and I don't want to give a, a fake <laughs> number. So, yeah, I think that's that's probably it for that one. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, like, it's some people... Um, I think that the the more you try it, the better the better you'll get at it, anyways. So it's you know I would I wouldn't worry about that on that side of things. Um, okay, so another question is reapplying, reapplying. Does this affect scholarships if you have one? Um, no, no, I I don't I don't think so. I think the scholarships that we've given um given out they haven't all been in the same cohort i'm pretty sure some of them have been sporadic so uh i wouldn't say that um maybe they all haven't passed at the same time i can't be absolutely certain about that but i'm sure that they've done their uh, their assessments in different different periods um so possibly they needed to try again um but yeah 
I I don't think that would affect your scholarship at all. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> Uh, will we give it another like 10 seconds? Let's see if anyone has any last burning questions. No? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your question. Oh, wait, we've got one more. <laughs> uh, Average time for what is the average time for a student to land a job? Uh, so we have a really great um, program for when you finish uh, makers. We have a full team that helps you prep um, for you know CV prep, uh, interview skills. So normally we say like give yourself three months, three to six months to find a job after. However, that's not necessarily true for everyone. We've had people that have found jobs uh, a few weeks after a month after it just depends um for example the cohort that's just graduating today we have a careers fair for them next week where we have our hiring partners come who are specifically looking to hire makers last careers fair we had i think we, uh, or the one before that sorry they hired 30 makers that day i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it was bang on 30 and it's because a lot of companies that we work with they just love you know the way that makers are taught so you're kind of in a good spot if you're if you do do the boot camp because you're you know in a position where you're essentially sought out by companies um that's not to say it's not tough doing interviews and it's not tough doing the job hunt but um you know uh to answer your question and phil give yourself three to six months in terms of pre preparing um for looking for a job um Okay, next question. Do people mostly go work for companies or is freelance a sustainable option? Um, I, I would say working for companies straight after the bootcamp is more, um, in my opinion, that's what's happened. I don't know, Leo, if you've had people that have gone freelance. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe that happened in the past, but that's probably not happening more often. But in terms of like, I guess, more career, I mean, it depends on what you want to do, your own experience and what you, you can do. Maybe some people would be getting freelance jobs and being really good at it but in terms of like keeping on that learning journey and really building your career and your portfolio and your skills it's probably better to join a company because then you'll be able to be mentored by more senior people you'll be able to work really in that environment that you get a lot of skills uh whereas freelancing you know you you, you might get that in a way because that would be way harder and you would be on your own as well uh, so there would be maybe less opportunities for you to to have that kind of environment that in if you work in a in a company with, and you get all that mentoring, which is kind of like a continuation of what we what we have on the course. Yeah. Hey. Um. We'll do another ten seconds. <laughs> Just one message there, it says you're on mute. <laughs> okay, I think that's us. Um, thank you so much for your questions. Um, if you do have anything else you'd like to ask, please reach out to us on social media, on LinkedIn, our email as at contact at makers.tech. Um, we're always available to, uh, to answer any of your questions um, regarding the bootcamp or apprenticeships or anything, even hiring just yeah they uh, just reach out to us all right uh, everyone have a great weekend and thanks again thanks everyone bye, bye. have a nice weekend